Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Michael's out on the field, and we are absolutely drilling oil. I love it when a good investment comes together. Welcome, and let's get busy on these stories. UK nuclear plant closures threaten energy bill reductions. That doesn't sound real good. German city chooses diesel buses over electric. Cites high cost even after subsidies. Subsidies don't work. Colonial pipeline weighs a sale at $10 billion. That's a very important pipeline. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot in this story. Biden-Harris electrification push spiked household energy costs. DOE data reveals. Holy smokes, Batman. And one of the best articles I've ever read. World's most accurate economist predicts the U.S. election outcome. You can't make this one up. Hey, let's get started with our buddies over there in the U.K. The U.K. nuclear plant closes closures threaten energy bill reductions. This is really, if you want to understand what investment in green energy and printing money and having a lousy economy and having people starve to death really is all about, just look no further than Germany, the UK, New York, New Jersey, and California. According from data from Cornwell Insights, wholesale electricity prices are expected to rise to 83 pounds per megawatt hour in 2027 just after the AGRs or the nuclear reactors are expected to close, surpassing the average of 81 megawatt per hour or pound per hour as suppliers paid in 2025. Analysts note that since the wholesale prices significantly influence consumer bills, this trend poses a risk to government effort, efforts to cut costs. You cannot put renewable energy into a grid and expect it to go down. It is expensive. Electricity demand is projected to increase by 30% over the next five years, but currently three of those nuclear stations have been decommissioned with two more expected to close by 2026 and 2027, and the remaining two by 2028 and 2029. They are not going to make it. If you're in the UK, get your passport and move out. Sorry, you're not going to make it on their energy plans. Let's go to the next story here. German city chooses diesel buses over electric sites. High cost even after subsidies. A German city learns electric buses are significantly pricier than diesel ones, even with subsidies causing delays in their green transition. The city of Dortmund, Germany, is finding what it's all about. Due to the high cost, DSW21, a German transit company, is now delaying the full transition to an electric fleet and plans to continue purchasing some diesel buses alongside the electric ones. If you want to get there, use the diesel. The diesel bus costs around uh, $432,720 or about 400,000 euros. Whereas an electric bus costs around 800,000 euros or $865,000. And then that doesn't even include the cost of charging the beasts. So without financial support from the German government, replacing the remaining 155 diesel buses with electric vehicles would cost 140 million euros or $152 million. That's almost three times as expensive as buying the new diesel buses. They will never meet their climate goals. They will meet their climate goals if they buy cheap Russian natural gas reopen their nuclear facilities. So go nuclear so that you can then use that to charge the bus. But the only way they're going to re-industrialize Germany is to buy cheap Russian gas. Just thought I'd point that out. Let's go to the Colonial Pipeline. Colonial Pipeline weighs sale at $10 billion. 
plus the value. Holy smokes. The Alpharetta, the Georgia-based company, is working with advisors to see if it gauges interest from potential buyers, according to the people who asked not to be identified, as it could draw interest from financial institutions as infrastructure funds, as well as that. Colonial Pipeline operates the most vital fuel systems in the U.S., covering more than 5,500 miles from Houston to New Jersey. Boy, I don't know if you remember when the Colonial uh, Pipeline had a uh, cyber attack hit it and it caused some real heartburn. I'll tell you what, you shut down diesel and you shut down uh, gasoline, you're going to have some serious problems. And then building a replacement for this is just not going to happen. Pipelines are a fantastic investment. Reuters uh, report reported in June that some of the Colonial Pipeline owner were exploring, exploring divesting their stakes. Deliberations are an early stage. There's no certainty that Colonial Pipeline will decide to pursue a sale. There, there's some conspiracy theories that are already swir swirling around this. Now, remember, there are big things. Even the Twin Towers uh, sold right before they went down. So you can imagine some of the conspiracy theories that people are saying, wait a minute, if this is going to get sold, is it going to get uh, shut down or permanently harmed? I don't think so, but... You never know. During the summer, One Oak agreed to buy Global Infrastructure Partners' entire interest in Enlink Mainstream and equity interest in Medallion, uh, the largest closely crude hell gathering transportation system in the Permian Basin. Pipelines are a fantastic investment. So uh, whoever's looking at this, I think it's a good buy because gas and gasoline and uh, diesel are not going away anytime soon. Let's take a look at this one. The Harris-Biden electrification push spiked household energy costs and DOE data reveals. I'll tell you what, you can't buy this kind of entertainment. A, do not trust any of the information that we get from the government. It does not, they, you can't trust them. Now, on October 17th, the residential energy price from the Department of Energy, DOE, shows electricity was roughly four times as expensive as natural gas and in 24, with exports telling the DCNF the White House electrification push is an example of extremist climate policy hurting everyday Americans. You can't buy this kind of entertainment. The Department of Energy has consistently shown that natural gas is a much cheaper energy source for households than electricity. I'll tell you what, the only re even the EIA has said the only reason the United States has really reduced its carbon footprint is because we've shut down coal, which we should cut down coal plants and put in natural gas plants. We should burn all the natural gas we can with the proper methodology so that we don't pollute and put as little pollution in there to the environment. We need to deliver the lowest kilowatt per hour to all the citizens of, of the entire planet and have the least amount of impact on the environment. That's nuclear. That's natural gas. Let's get this done. So anyway, government policies trying to block the use of natural gas in favor of electricity will significantly drive up prices, making home heating appliances needlessly expensive. We need the government to get out of the way of the free market and also ESG did a great thing in that it rose people's awareness not to pollute and that we want to reward the companies that do not pollute and take care of business and the environment. Let's go ahead and roll off to the other, the last story for today. The world's most accurate economist predicts the U.S. election outcome. Republican candidate Donald Trump will most probably win the U.S. election this next month. Economist Christopher Barad, uh, ranked by Bloomberg as the top forecaster in the American economy. With one week to go into the election, Democrat candidate and current uh, Vice President Kamala Harris leads Trump by less than one percentage point, according to the New York Times, which I don't believe that number. 
Making his prediction on an X post, Murad wrote, looking at a different metric such as betting markets, polls, election modelers, forecast, financial markets, and as of now, the most probable outcomes are Trump victory with a GOP clean sweep. This really makes me happy, but it just does not mean there's not going to be a bunch of funny stuff going on between now and the election day. So get out there and vote. I voted for President Trump. Vance, I want his whole team because I'm going to be honest with you right now. Without RFK Jr. on there, Trump would not be able to take uh, advantage of RFK Jr. making America healthy great again. Him bringing him on. Tulsi Gabbard, you have Tucker Carlson, you have the Hulk. I love the Hulk, by the way. But you have this whole crew of people that are behind him that were Democrats. This ought to wake people up. So this is a very encouraging sign, but get out and vote early before they start pulling shenanigans on us. And like in Pennsylvania, God bless uh, Scott Pressler out there. Uh, I'd love to visit with you. I'd love to give you a hug. They're shutting down the polls, the early voting places, the polling booths there at two o'clock in the afternoon. Why? It's because there's too many Republicans going out and voting right now. So you're seeing some shenanigans going on out there, and we have a country to save. Get out there and vote. Please like, subscribe, and as you heard me say at the beginning of the show, Michael is out on site. He's drilling wells, and our investment that we're in partnered there with Pecos Operating has given us about 30% money back, 32% on our investment, which is also a tax beneficial investment. So if you have anything, fill out the form that's on the Energy Newsbeat website. Give us a call. We'd sure love to let you take a look at it. Thanks and have an absolutely wonderful day. Look forward to hearing from you all soon.